I'm Matt Hinkle and today we will be reviewing how to calculate elevation gain and loss and also appliance loss for driver operators. This is the fourth video in our pump operator series. If you haven't seen the earlier videos, please take the time to view those. You need to have an understanding of those topics before we can go any further. The next thing that we're going to look at is the elevation pressure gain or loss. And where does elevation pressure gain or loss come from? Well, the easiest example of that is to look at a water tower. And in this example, the water tower, the level of the water is at 100 feet in the air. So we're looking at a column of water and that water being at 100 feet generates pressure at the bottom for us to use. The way that this works is for every one foot, a column of water that's one foot tall, you're gonna generate 0.434 pounds of pressure or PSI. So with that logic, 10 feet, for every 10 feet, we gain 4.34 pounds of pressure. So at 100 feet in the air, we would have 43.4 PSI, pounds of pressure. Now, we use that because for every 10 feet, we usually round that number up to 5 PSI. So when you go uphill, we'll have to add 5 PSI. When we go downhill, we'll subtract 5 PSI. So we're going to use two common formulas to calculate the elevation pressure gain or loss. The first one's going to be the height divided by 2. So the way that works is, as an example, you have a, an aerial device or a ladder truck that's 50 feet in the air, flowing a nozzle from the tip of the aerial at 50 feet. All we do is take that height and divide it by two, which is 25 PSI. So we need to add 25 PSI if that nozzle is 50 feet in the air for it to have the right nozzle pressure. Second example is gonna be for high rises. It's, it's commonly used for high rises, and that's gonna be the number of floors minus the first floor times five. So 5 PSI per floor because a commercial floor is generally 10 feet. So for every 10 feet, we'll add 5 PSI. The reason we don't count the first floor is because that's ground level. That's even with our truck. That's not going uphill. That's going to be level. Assuming that it is level, it could be up or, up or down. But you're going to take the number of stories minus the first floor and multiply that by 5 PSI. In this case, it's the sixth floor. We're operating on the sixth floor. We're going to subtract the first floor, which is 5, and multiply that by 5. So we get 25 PSI, what we need to add to our pump discharge pressure to get this uh, correct, to get the nozzle pressure correct. In the last example, we have a hill. So when we look at a hill, we're going uphill or downhill. If I'm at the pumper and I'm at the bottom of the hill pumping to a nozzle and then at the top of this hill, I need to add five PSI because I'm going 10 feet uphill. If I'm reverse to that, where I'm at the pumper at the top of the hill and the nozzle is at the bottom of the hill, now I can subtract 5 PSI from my pump discharge pressure because I'm actually getting a benefit from being pumping downhill. It makes it easier for the truck to pump downhill. So those are really the methods that we're going to use to determine our elevation gain or loss. You'll typically do this at the end. Once you determine what your pressure would be on a pump chart or on your uh, friction loss chart, which you're using, you may look and say, I need to add this much or subtract this much because I'm going uphill, downhill, I'm working on an upper floor or a lower floor, or I'm trying to feed an aerial device, something like that. Next, we're going to look at appliance pressure loss. That's when we're going to use an appliance within our uh, hose lines or the way that we set up our lines or the way that we're fighting fire. So there's a few rules of thumb that we have when we have appliances or when we use appliances. One of those is we add 10 PSI of friction. We add 10 PSI to our pump discharge pressure if we're moving more than 350 gallons per minute through a Y. The reason that is, if we're only flowing 100 gallons a minute through a Y, then there's not very much turbulence or friction created because the Y, that water is easily moving through the Y. When we try to push 350 gallons a minute through that Y and it splits, we create a lot of turbulence and friction within that device or within that appliance. So you only add 10 PSI if you go over 350 gallons a minute. That's a rule of thumb. So if you're under 350 gallons a minute, you don't worry about it. You don't add anything. The next thing is going to be we add 25 PSI for a master stream regardless of the flow. That's a rule of thumb that's in a lot of textbooks. However, when you look at this rule, you need to look at the master stream that you're using. There's a lot of master streams, rapid attack monitors, blitz monitors, and those kind of things that will tell you based on the manufacturer, what you should or should not add. You're gonna have to get out and flow test that to actually know what you're pumping. The last thing is gonna be 25 PSI for a standpipe system. That's another rule of thumb, but the only way you're gonna know that is to get out and try it or to look at the specs on the standpipe system. Some of them will have them stamped on there as to what you're supposed to pump or what you're supposed to add to get to a certain floor. 
But looking at this, remember that when you're using a Y, if I'm flowing two 200 gallon a minute hand lines off that line, that's 400 gallons a minute trying to go through the Y. So that's something we have to look at and pay attention to when we're working problems. The wide line is both of those lines are having to move through that Y. So you can end up having a lot of water moving through a Y pretty quickly. Next part is the master streams. Remember that the master streams are also for aerial devices. It could be a, a master stream up on top of a ladder truck. So that is in addition to the pipe waterway, the, the water moving through the master stream. That's where that number comes from, is the additional loss that we have. And the standpipe system, regardless of, of what it is, the 25 PSI is gonna be greatly determined by the size of that standpipe system. If we're using really large piping, then we're not gonna have as much friction loss. If we have a lot of turns and bends going through a riser, then we're gonna have a lot of friction loss. So it just depends on the system and you really have to flow test that or get with the specs or the engineers to see what exactly it's supposed to be. I hope you now have an understanding of how to calculate elevation gains and losses and also appliance pressure losses. In our next video, we will summarize all of the pieces needed to calculate pump discharge pressure, and we will work through several common scenarios. For more training resources, please take the time to visit our website at www.boxalarmtraining.com. There you will find several training articles and downloadable resources for you to print out and share for your own training sessions.